High end PSA mail day today, boys and girls. All right, we've got two orders that we're gonna go through. A three card, very high end, regular order that came back. We're gonna bust into that. But then we also have a 36 card order with a very high gem rate. Uh, looks like we've got uh, roughly about an 80% plus gem rate on this order. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it. So you're gonna have to wait till the end for the goods on the expensive stuff. I'm gonna make you go through all the boring stuff first. So let's jump into the boring, shall we? First cards up. There's gonna be a lot of Michael Jordans in here. It's from a box set, but not every card's that way. That's why we're gonna go pretty quick. First, Upper Deck Legacy Gold, Michael Jordan, PSA 10. We got another one, PSA 10. We're also gonna talk about why I graded these, break down the finances here at the end. The finances on this look really good. ROI is gonna be pretty high. Uh, gold, PSA 10. It's because we've got a good gym rate. PSA 10. PSA 10. Going really quick. PSA 10, because I wanna talk about the finances. PSA 10, and aren't these really cool? Love old school upper deck with gold foil. Absolutely love it. They just don't make cards like this anymore. PSA 10, PSA 10. You can imagine whenever I was looking at the order, I was very happy to see all the nice little tins coming through here. This came from a box called Upper Deck Jordan Legacy. There's two different versions. There's a regular version, and then there is what's called the Hall of Fame Edition. The Hall of Fame Edition, every single card is gold. So this foil is gold rather than silver on the regular version. Hall of Fame Edition or the gold version, there's roughly 30,000 cards per uh, per uh, sets made total. So there's 30,000 cards you know, per card. And um, I think it's pretty cool. Again, it, it's kind of limited based on today's production numbers. I mean, we got cards made in the millions nowadays. Let's go ahead and move these guys over. I like these uh, ones that have MJ in number 45. Cannot believe people are saying that he is not the GOAT. And Kang, the Kang is the GOAT. Man, I get it. People are getting stupider by the day. I get it, I get it, I get it. We live in a wild time. Man, these are just sexy cards, dude. Miss old school upper deck. Not every single card is from this set, but a bunch of them are. Uh, so I want to go through these really quick because I know you guys get bored with seeing this same stuff over and over. Show me something new, Tyler. Show something different. All right, this is a really cool one. I'm very glad that this card gemmed. In the Hall of Fame edition, there's four bonus cards. This is probably one of the more difficult ones to grade, as well as the next one. Um, I did sell one of the bonus cards already, and I shipped it out this morning, so we can see what that sold for. It sold for $75. Um, this is one of the more difficult ones to grade, just because of you know it's towards the back of the set, and the way they wrap these in the set, it's just hard for these cards to grade. So I'm, I'm happy that this one gemmed and I'm happy that the other one gemmed because, you know, that's a pretty valuable card. One of the big reasons why I wanted to get this set is you never really know how the MJ Fleer 86 retro card is going to turn out. This, this set does have this card in it. It's a bonus card. They've done a lot of different variations, 96, 97, Decade of Excellence in the Fleer product, in Fleer Ultra, in Fleer Metal. All those are pretty popular. They've re retroed them in 2006 and 2007. There's all kinds of retros out there. And of course, in this Legacy set, there is another retro, which is this card. You can see it's card 97 of 100 in the set. This one came back a seven off centered, but hey, I'm, I've just wanted to get it graded. That's the worst grade. All right, every other card is now something different than the MJs. So we've got, this is a really cool card. I love the grade. I think it's fantastic. 1997 Flare Showcase Diamond Cuts. Love old school Flare. Love late 90s Flare. Love late 90s Flare. Love late 90s Metal. This is not metal. This is Flare Showcase. Just, they don't make cards like this anymore. It's so freaking sexy. I love cards like this. Hope y'all get pumped about cool cards like I do because those cards are sweet. O2 Joe Mauer. Y'all have seen me talk about why I think these cards are pretty cool. Uh, recent Hall of Fame inductee. This is a refractor number to $7.99. So I got a lot of those at PSA. Uh, you got Shohei. Big bat Shohei. It's got the big stick. PSA 10. Hit a home run. Like his fourth one in the spring. He's hot. Colt Emerson. PSA 9. One of the only sapphires of him that I have. This is a big boy. Big boy. Oh, why? It's got a little dust on it. Man, come on. Got a little dust. Let's clean up my white. Dude, he's got the coolest name. Like, 
some people just have that name like it's an epic name and it's going to hit like White Langford. I can just see 10 years from now people going to shows being like, you got any of them White Langfords? I can just, he just has the name of a superstar, just one of those, you know, folk legend superstars. So that in itself means you should invest. <laughs> uh, Prism CJ Stroud, what a horrible, why do they do this? This is so stupid. They just say Prism. It's Panini pr Pupini Prism. Put Pupini on the label. There's so much room there. Pupini Prism. PSA 9. Pupini Prism Silver. They have still, I don't know what they're doing here. They need to fix their labels. Silver, Pupini. This is a really cool card. Love this. Uh, in basketball, the Wimby is not a super short print, but in football, they made these super short prints. These are not common inserts at all. So because of that, it's going to be somewhat confusing to collectors. If you go to a show, somebody's going to gloss over this and be like, eh, it's just a cheap insert. It's a case hit in football. So there's only around five or six of these graded PSA 10s. So I um, think that's pretty sweet. Puka Nakua, PSA 9. Puka Nakua PSA 10. I love that name. It's like a Pokemon character. Puka Nakua. Can I go buy some Pukas? It's like Pikachu. Except Puka. <laughs> PSA 10 Red Wave. And I just sold this card actually five minutes ago before I started hitting record. Sold for 161 bucks. <laughs> Dude, Wimby stuff is just selling like hotcakes. I want some of this stuff for the next show that I'm doing, which is coming up this weekend. I don't know whenever I'm going to drop this video. Uh, we're going to see, but... Phoenix show coming up in the middle of March during spring training. One of my favorite shows. So we're going to cover the finances on that after we break into this because this is what the people want. The people want to see what's inside. Three beautiful cards. I'm telling you it's worth it. It is worth it. Uh, let's see if we can open our box. Yeah. Let's open it this way. Oh. Oh. Mmm. Fresh California. Doesn't smell like California turds. It smells like California cards. Some fresh plastic. All right. Let's see. Let's wrap, unwrap. All right, I want to hide these. Hide them. Throw that away. Okay. First card. <laughs> These are good. Oh, these are good. Dude, I've been waiting on this card for over two freaking years from Tops. Two damn years. I haven't posted on my Instagram that I redeemed this card and Shohei Otani is still actively signing. I literally got this redemption. It is a 2021 redemption. I got it a month ago. It took over two years to get this card. Like, Tops, what are we doing? I actually put in a request to have this card replaced. As soon as I put in the request to have it replaced, a week later I got shipping notification. But baby, oh baby, was it worth it. The wait was worth it, guys. Two out of 10, this is the red. This is a PSA 10. And the case, dude, the case just feels beefy. They, they use beefy cases for these. I don't know what it is. This just feels, feels immaculate. I love it. All right, that's a great one. It gets better. Well, maybe the same, but it gets better after this. All right, next. Shohei Otani. Ooh. I did not think this card was going to grade Jim Mint. I thought that the surface may hold it back. It just had the faintest touches on the surface, but I went ahead and sent it in anyway. And boy, oh boy, I am happy. Card number 20 out of 25. Two Shohei Otanis back to back. I dropped these off at the Burbank and got them back. The next one... Man, this is a big one. This is a big one. I, it's already posted up on my eBay store, so a lot of people may have already seen it, but I am thrilled to death that this card came back a PSA 10. The value has, on the raw version, has literally gone up about 150% since I bought it. I wanna say I paid around 1,200, 1,300 for it. Y'all can look it up online. Here's the serial number. Y'all can go dig for it. 195 out of 299. You can see what I paid for it. It's all there, it's all on eBay. PSA 10s now, however, they're a little all over the place, but they range anywhere between 3,000 and 5,000. So it's gonna be a good payday in terms of getting this one done. 
You know, there's a lot of people out there that say that you're an idiot if you're buying Victor Wimbanyana. Well, I guess I'm a freaking idiot because I'm buying Victor and I'm flipping Victor. And this is probably one of the best flips so far of the year, along with some of my other cards uh, that you've seen on the channel. This is definitely a, a candidate of the year for the flip. Okay, so this is obviously going to be a very profitable order because I paid 700 for this a couple years ago. You know, PSA 10 is going to be great. I paid a thousand for this raw. There's not going to be a whole lot of meat on the bone. Even if I sold it for 1500, I may make a couple hundred bucks, hoping I get more than that out of it. This is the big card in the order, however. This is the one that's going to be, you know, the big money maker. Going to make a couple grand on this at a minimum, uh, maybe three grand. Okay, now we're going to transition over to our spreadsheet here. I paid $250 for that boxed set, 100 cards. And what I did is, is I allocated the entire expense of that box of cards to the 23 cards. And I love that I submitted 23 cards, 23 jersey number MJ. Uh, I submitted 23 cards and I allocated the entire expense to the cards that I submitted. So the cost basis for the raw cards that didn't meet the cut or make the cut is $0. So I can take them to shows, sell them for a couple bucks, sell them for $5, et cetera. And you know, it's kind of free after that. But basically for these, it's about $11 per card, plus the grading fee and the shipping expense, et cetera. And I'm anticipating to get maybe really about 55 to $60 per card afterwards. I think that's gonna be pretty good. Now we jump down here to some of these other cards. So the PSA 9 Flare Showcase Diamond Cuts of Griffey may, may get 150, I don't know. Um, the Joe Maurer Refractor, I've conservatively won 25. They've been going over 200, but maybe high 100s is good. The Big League, if I can get maybe 90 or 100 bucks, after eBay fees, I clear, you know, 80, you know, that's, there's some margin there. Colt Emerson, this may be a stretch of getting 30 out of it. We'll see. The Wyatt Langford, this is severely undervaluing what this card goes for. It currently goes for 350. I'm going to stretch that as much as I can because he's hot right now. He's what everybody wants. CJ Stroud, uh, I sold this card, so I sold it for right around $45. So I didn't get 50, but I got 45 out of it. Paid six bucks, got it graded. Uh, CJ Stroud Prism, uh, I have 40 conservatively, just sold the PSA 9 for 57, so I think I could probably clear 40 out of it. The Prism Brick Silver, 100 is a conservative estimate. These have been going for 130. The Instant Impact, I have conservatively 400. I'm going to make more than 400 out of this. The last couple sold for 775. The Pink Puka Nakua, honestly, I don't really know what the market is on this. I have conservatively 40 for the 9, 80 on the 10, Red Wave for 100. I think I'm probably going to do a little bit better than that. And then the Victor, I had conservatively 75. I just sold it for 161. So my conservative ROI here, basically I spent $947 on cost of goods sold, spent about 600 bucks to get everything graded, including return shipping. And then I'm going to get about $2,500. I'm going to get a little bit over $2,500. I've talked about how a lot of these cards are very conservatively underwritten. So it would not surprise me if I push that number to 3,000, but conservatively, let's say that I don't, and I stick to these conservative estimates, we're looking at about a 66.73% ROI. Very small order, only gonna make about $1,000, but $1,000 off 36 cards, and this is pretty easy to do. Um, thought it was pretty nice. And then you throw in this. This is a great day, great order. Uh, <laughs> so all, all these cards together, we're probably gonna end up making maybe about four to $5,000 on everything that you saw on, on camera. So. Very quick video, wanted to show everyone uh, these cool cards that we got and also the finances behind it. So, all right guys, let me know what you think down below and we were gonna see you next time.